The second part of our trip to Duck Type Drags 2023 is here and just in time with barely two weeks to go before the 2024 event. If you enjoyed the last part or any of our videos so far, why not subscribe and help the growth of the channel a little bit, maybe by watching some of the other road trip or project videos. I'm reasonably confident that the bodies on these are both Model Ts, maybe 1927-ish, just before the Model A was released, but they're so departed from stock and customised by their very nature, I'm still somewhat guessing. Both look fantastic with very different overall aesthetics, while the green one has what I think is a small box Chevy, the black one has a much more modern engine, but I'm not sure what. I am a little more certain on what the supercharger is. It appears to be an Eaton M112, complete with twin water-air intercoolers, removed from an early 2000s Jaguar XK or XJR. The steering link is also unlike anything I can remember seeing, but most importantly, the whole package sounds great. Back on the Jaguar theme, I don't think this XJ6 still has an original engine because, well, let's call it a hunch. I really dig the taped on front end pattern over the bonnet and around the scoop though. Of course, running repairs are a fact of life when racing, and the quest for spare parts is always real, and hoping that somebody else has just what you need in their spares. How are you? I'm alright. You didn't bring any of these, did you? I brought, I, I brought camera things, and that's about the lot. <laughs> okay. That's what I need. Is what broke? Uh, that's the pin that goes through the spider gears on oh, the differential. Wow. Oh. Uh, I found the weak link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think this duster is a 1970, but without the bumpers or a good view of the lights, I'm taking more than just a wild stab in the dark. It looks great though on those wheels and it's sitting perfectly atop them, and the interior is still looking really nice too. Here's one of the many Tri-5s at the event awaiting its next run down the lanes. The interior on this one is really nicely appointed, matching blue dash and white and blue upholstery to the bodywork. Up front there's a giant tunnel ram with a pair of velocity stacks poking through the hood, or they would if the hood was installed. Junkyard Fugitive is a great name for this third gen Studebaker champion, which might have long since stayed at the scrapper had it not been turned into this rat rod gasser by Caitlin and her dad. Caitlin is an illustrator and all the graphics are done by herself. Pretty impressive, and you can see more of the car at Junkyard Fugitive on Instagram. Looking at the pictures, it's come a long way since being picked up, and it's great to see it being kept alive. A lifted 940 isn't exactly what you'd expect to see at your regular drag event, but duct tape isn't anything like a regular drag event. The early 900 series didn't feature a cross-country trim, so this one's had a big lift, some knobbly tyres, and judging by the engine bay, probably a bit more power than when it left the factory. So wandering around the parking lot here, I saw this Durango cruising around, and I thought, that looks a little bit weird. It's got a lot of exhaust coming out the top, but it also has a completely different front end. And I'm here with Sid, and Sid's gonna tell me what the hell he's done to this poor Durango. So what was it originally? Obviously Durango 4x4, but... Yeah, it was a 4x4 Durango with the 5.2 Magnum. Yeah. Um, that motor ended up getting a rod knock, mm -hmm. and so I tore that out. Uh, accidentally, and I, I do mean accidentally, <laughs> bought an RV from an online auction for uh, 100 bucks out the door. Wow, that's and cheap. And then it just so happened to have a 440 in it, and oh. there, for the RVs there's pretty much two options. You either have a cast crank or the forge crank. Yep. This one's got the forge crank, Even so better. way better. dollars that is a bargain. Oh, absolutely. Like, that's the steal of the century. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so the, uh, the front end is from a 99 Sunfire. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, that was called Captain Crunch. It was a little okay. off-roader. Hence um, Commodore Crunch on the back exactly. of this, it, it's been upgraded. And, exactly, yeah. promoted, if you will. Nice. Um, so originally, 
So Captain Crunch originally was your Sunfire. Was that yeah. V8 as well? Uh, no, was that... that was a stock drivetrain, just a little 2.4 okay. twin cam. Right. Nothing fancy, nothing yeah. fast. It cool. ran, I think, a 17, 8 and a quarter mile wow. at best. <laughs> so that's also lifted with, with big tires. So oh, Okay, fair enough. Know. So yeah, you're, It you're wasn't kinda... built for speed. So and what happened to Captain Crunch to result in the front going on this? Uh, basically, the one of the cam timing gears decided it wanted to just brake. Right. And it's a double overhead cam interference motor, so that motor yeah, was just so it trash. Just punched itself to death. Right? Pretty much. Um, so yeah, that car was just dead in the water. Yeah. I bought the Durango. I was originally going to do a body swap, but I just I just didn't have the the effort or the <laughs> equipment to do yeah. a body swap for it. So I took the 440, slapped it in the empty engine bay. It's got a 727 torque flight, <laughs> uh, RV drive shaft. Uh, the exhaust is from a Chevy small block header kit. The carburetor, the L-Block 1905 carburetor, just standard parts store variant, yeah. um, but I got it for free. Um, the part that's free is the part for me. Exactly. Uh, it's got, you know, parts store upgrades, it's got L-Block ignition coil, new distributor cap and rotor, uh, MSD street fire wires, uh, platinum spark plugs. Uh, it's got the radiator fans are off of an 01 Taurus that I actually also got for free. Okay, so and the, then, what the is this? You said this is 90s. Yeah, 99 right? Durango, okay. 73 440. Yeah. Whatever year, small block kit for the exhaust. Yeah. 01 Taurus fans, 05 Durango radiator, 99 Sunfire front end, 2000s Impala cop car push bumper, um, and then we got you know Jeeper Miata circle headlights. And the, you always extended the chassis legs just forward to put the the front end. Pretty on. much, I just I just chopped up a bit of RV frame and just welded it on there, and it holds. I mean, I can go on this push bar bounce around i mean it passes the structural test oh so, yeah yeah call it good but it's just i'm impressed with how well well in inverted commas the um <laughs> the, the front end of the wing from the durango kind of lines up into the back of the wing from the sunfire like that's that's yeah, kind of impressive kinda just worked out the durango yeah. it's despite being a mid-size competing with both like the chevy yeah. blazer and chevy tahoe because yeah. in between size on both mm. It's smaller than it seems, yeah. but also bigger. It's, it's kind of weird. It's amazing. Um, I love the, the zip tie stitching. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The that was actually back like when, that. back when Captain Crunch was still running. I hit a tree right. while off roading, <laughs> and just ripped a hole in the bumper, and I just drilled a couple holes in it, zip tie stitch. It's amazing. And is it holds. That, is that the bonnet latch lock as well? Uh, that is the old Durango latch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the Durango one, right? Okay. Yeah, but currently it doesn't have any hoods, so it it's it. kind of just sitting yeah. there. Of course, the main event is the Hoopty Challenge, and the precursor to that is selecting the entries. That basically means potential candidates pull by Steve and David, and they make a call on whether something is over or under $5,000. Those deemed over do still race, but they end up in the bogus class with some really wild projects. So sit back while we have a look at some of the contenders as they're judged. That has value. Yeah, when Dorsich buys it, I'll just get those off you, Steve. Okay, oh, they're mine? Thanks, man. Man, yeah, see how this works? Oh, it's got a stick in it. What trans is in it? It is an 833, and it's got a magnum. Did you, like, spray bomb the whole thing without masking anything? It's, like, all one color. Okay, yeah, the engine bay is the same color as, as the engine. The stock exhaust manifolds, it does have an aftermarket intake. It's got one of those Summit Holly carburetors. Remember those weirdo things? What do you think, Steve? I think this thing's in. I mean, yeah, it's got that pump of a body style. It's got a junkyard motor with a carburetor on it. Oh, yeah, that's... I may actually disagree with you there, but I'm going to allow it. So this guy's in naturally aspirated battle of the meters. This one I'm saying no on principle, Steve. Bogus. Bogus. Look at him, look at the grin on his face. You can't trust that. I don't trust it. It's bogus. What engine's in this? 318 Hemi six pack. Bogus. I... <laughs> what is it actually? 440. It's got a 40 in it. Yeah, that's very cool and everything, but there's no chance that that sells for less than 5K. Bye-bye. <laughs> the four-door Rambler American. 64-ish? 65. All right. What's under the hood? <laughs> Let's have a look.
probably one of like 75 different 4.8 LSs on property, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah, maybe a 6 liter 4.8. It's the 6 liter 4.8, okay. So it's a 6 liter, he does have an aftermarket throttle body, stock truck intake manifold, Wilwood brakes, interesting like proportion valve uh, situation, aluminum radiator, I don't know. What do you think, Steve? I think it's in. All right, in. Any 68 Coronet on Earth is going to be worth more than five grand at this point, isn't it? If it runs and drives? Okay, the interior is completely gutted. Here's what you're going to have to overcome, dude. The fact that it is a complete 68 Coronet. I, I will let you explain, but I just want to look. Okay, it is fairly straight. It is somewhat rust free. The floors are really solid. And under the hood, it has a 440. It's out of a motorhome. It was a Pace Arrow. It's completely stock other than an intake, a carburetor, and headers. Yeah, but it's also a 68 Cornette. Steve, I was trying to, I, I was looking at a gutted shell, and it was kind of starting to crowd five grand. So, 68 Cornette? Running and driving with the 440, I, I think it's bogus. Uh, I'm going to go to the crowd. They haven't decided one in a while. We're going to see if they're going to give some slack to this. Is he in? Yeah. Or is he out? Bogus. Yeah. Or is he bogus? Yeah. I think he's bogus. Yeah, you got cursed by the body style. That happens a lot here. Like if this was, I don't know, a Crown Vic, no one would care. <laughs> Five grand? <laughs> yeah, here we go. Would you sell it for five grand? He goes, absolutely not. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, that wasn't a tough decision. <laughs> All right, what's up with this? Uh, nothing special, you know, just got cop tires, cop brakes, <laughs> cop engine. Bone stock, or what do you got going on? Bone stock. Do you believe him, Steve? Yeah. We got on hit it. <laughs> All right. He's in. In case you haven't figured out the rules for this thing, I'll literally make it up as you go along. No one cares. We're just here for the fun. All right, this is going to be another body style violation here. Uh, Steve, what do you think on the 65 Ranchero? I think I would buy it now at five grand. Will you sell this to Steve Wilson for five grand? Probably. You would. Steve, you might be buying a car. Let's pop the hood see what you got going on here. I mean, I think this thing is a, a body smell problem. What? Yeah, it's straight. It is clean, decent. You're going to get value because of the body style, dude. There's just nothing I can do about it. Yeah, I'm going to have to give you a bogus. I'm sorry. It's what happens. you got to get, like, less desirable body styles for Battle of the Beaters. But oh, you're in, you're racing, you're having fun, and you're here at Duct Tape Drag. Oh man, do I hope this is a three cylinder. Oh, it's got the big block four banger in it. Yeah, the 1.3, they added the whole extra motor to this thing. Yeah, we're going to wave them right through. Let me just get the sticker on here. I really don't want to touch the car, but there you go. <laughs> he walks up to me. I'm shaking my head. He goes, no, no. Focus. <laughs> Just another value. I mean, if this was a three-quarter ton, I might have waffled a little bit. But it being a half ton, you just can't get that from here. What motor do you have in that? And it is a 5.3 LS swap. Yep. Love it. Thanks for coming. The Monza. Is it a Monza? Okay. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't like the Pontiac. The Skyhawk or Sunbird. That's right. The Sunbird. And small block Chevy in it, really poorly executed, iron heads, nothing special at all. And I'm not seeing any nitrous on it. He says, oh no. All right, yep, this guy's in. This is radical. What is this car? Four Galaxy. 70. 70 Galaxy. It's about a two-tone. It's darker green on the top than it is on the side. You do have a road bar in it, though not that it's really illegal. What do you got going on under the hood? Uh, an engine. <laughs> what? Yeah, what's it got going on here? It is an F. It's like a regular two-plate manifold, nothing too crazy. It's a pretty mild-looking motor. So, 
I think he's probably in. Really? I don't think this car sells for less than five grand. There's no way. All right. Is he in? Yeah. Or is he out? Yeah. That's about a uh, tie, so it's going to go to the Dolson. I say he's in. Okay, he's in. What's up to the hit of this? Kind of straight six. Okay. Let's have a look. MK3 Supra. It's got a five speed in it, but it's all stock. I have no idea what I'm looking at, Steve. Uh, just out of pure ignorance, you gotta let him in. Yeah, I think you're right. Pure ignorance lets him in. Is there some turbo on this that I can't find? No. No? It's stock. It is. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and believe him because we have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> is this a is this a LeBaron? No, it's diplomat. Oh, diplomat wagon. Very rare. So, what year? 79. 79 diplomat wagon and what? 360. 360. Well, that's a rare bird, actually. Was it stock with the 360? Well, you know what? That's rare, but that doesn't mean collectible or valuable. So, I would say overall uh, body style, he gets five. Let's take a look under the hood. But Steve knows that you can't get the hood of a Mopar open. It's an ugly day. I see no nitrous on this. Yeah, it's a Magnum engine swap, and he's good to go. We think this Mazda was probably, like, he's got something that we didn't know about. He didn't leave very strong, but he knows he's going to outrun Gale the Snail, who is banging gears there in his uh, Akano line wagon. I'm not sure that he's showing us everything with the Monza. Yeah, 15, 17, 89 miles an hour. That's, you think that's all it's got? That's something I don't trust about it. And the band, 22.78 seconds at 60 miles an hour. We got the 289 and the 66 Ford on the right hand side. We've got the basically stock 350 small block in the Monte Carlo on the left hand side. I'm gonna give it to the Monte Carlo. Yeah, I'm gonna say the power to weight advantage has gotta to go to the Monte Carlo, but you never know what happens. Oh, they leave the lines side by side. I think the Monte Carlo, oh, look at the smoke out of the Monte Carlo. Dude. Straight out of the tailpipe, that's ring seal. And even fogging the entire track, he wins. Look at that race, 1725 to 1720. the 
Turbo Boost 2571. As the sun went down between rounds, David was doing some Q&A with the fans. Have I ever run a big block Chevy with peanut ports? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah, they're worthless. 
Yeah, I did that long, long time ago when I was at Carcraft Magazine. We had a 454 with peanut ports, and we did a test and and upgraded it with some large ovals and some rectangles. And obviously, peanuts are terrible. It looks like we're going to race again, so let's do that. But before long, we were back to the track for the final heat. That's it for Duct Tape 2023. If you've enjoyed these two videos, maybe you'll like the ones from previous years or even some of our other road trips or the projects that we do on the drive. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow us on all the usual social media outlets, and maybe we'll see you at Duct Tape Drags 2024. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.